there and welcome back to Finding Wendy. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my weight of course and talk about this week's subject is my NSVs. So I put a huge list together of all the NSVs that I have uh, uh, accomplished. NSVs meaning non-scale victories in the last year. Okay so stay tuned. All right, first my stats. So uh, I started this whole journey back in 2000, December 2017. I weighed 450 pounds. I started my month-long OptiFast on February 20th, 2018, and I was 400 pounds. I had my surgery at Toronto Western Hospital. I had the um, vertical sleeve gastrostomy, gastro, gas, VSG surgery um, um, on March 20th. What day is it today, actually? Oh, it's the 24th of uh, February, so it's now 11 month anniversary of my surgery. And um, I was 375 when I had my surgery, and last week I was 249, and this week I'm 247. So I broke the stall, finally. I had a three week stall, and um, what I did was, uh, I'm, I'm hoping helped it, is that I did have two days of more calories so instead of eating 800 calories i had 1200 calories for two days in a row i was um talking to some people in the bariatric program and on facebook and some people had made that suggestion that you just up your calories for a couple of days and then go back down again and that usually breaks the stall so that's what happened sorry there's my dog again so uh 247 so 47 pounds to go until I hit Wonderland. So uh, it's exciting. So stay tuned and I'll talk about my, um, oh, I had my bariatric meeting this week as well. So I'm going to talk about that as well. So first I'll talk about our bariatric meeting. So finally, after a month or so, we had a uh, bariatric meeting, at least for me anyway, because the last time I didn't go because of bad weather. <clears throat> and the topic of the bariatric uh, support group meeting this last week was trauma and obesity and uh, dr sarah royal who is a phd in psychology uh, gave a psychologist uh, she was the staff uh, psychologist of the bariatric surgeon program surgery program at toronto western hospital and she was talking about trauma and obesity so basically um talking about um what is your traumatic experience that might have led to your overeating situation to what what is what is it that led to being obese basically so she talks about um define what sort of trauma you've had and a lot of people in the room shared the sort of trauma that they experience either being subject to abuse to spousal abuse to parental abuse or being bullied or some traumatic event happened somebody close to you died or somebody broke up with you, something that triggered you to eat and to eat all the time. So um, basically, uh, you know, trauma. So I took pictures of, uh, of the slide presentation and she, the, she was talking about um, the, the history of trauma is, can, has been linked to increased psychological distress PDS, PTSD is one of them, and other psychological problems, mood disorder, anxiety disorders, substance use disorders, eating disorders, etc. And uh, this trauma can, uh, can be linked to physical health outcomes, which includes po poor sleep, health disease, diabetes, and frequent headaches. So yeah, we all know stress isn't good for you. So you stress eat, but you can also have a lot of other things Just happening. Some stats that I wanted that she uh, shared with us about trauma and obesity. So that um, in individuals with obesity, rates of childhood maltreatment as, are as high as 69%. So many individuals with obesity Others don't have a trauma history that have obesity, but 69% do, which is very high. Um, individuals who experience adverse childhood events have a 1.3 time higher increased risk of developing obesity. Uh, PD PTSD symptoms are associated with increased risk of becoming obese. 
and trauma and mental health concerns are linked and mental health conditions and obesity physical health are linked so all very interesting things that uh you know i never associated p ptsd with obesity post-traumatic stress disorder because we think about post-traumatic stress disorder as something being linked to the military but yeah um so so some of the pathways that she talked about disrupting eating patterns emotional binge eating and stuff like that uh your weight and feeling safe and less vulnerable and it's a biological um situation that you have that could lead to obesity as well so if it's in your genes for example which we have discovered it's in my genes as i talked about in another video so um yeah so it was a very interesting presentation and um, she suggested if you want more information on pdsd that you actually go to the u.s government uh, pdsd uh, website and i'll leave the uh, link below um and uh, the other things that she recommends for these treatments is cognitive process therapy cpt or prolonged exposure pe and um yeah, so, so I just, yeah, it was a very interesting topic because, of course, stress and trauma is involved in all of our lives and, and there must be something in our family because um, I have, uh, we have a, a history of obesity in our family as well. And so stress related, I'm sure. And, uh, but it's also genetic. So that was the uh, support group meeting. So next I'll talk about my NSV. Okay, so I wrote down all my NSVs in my um, diary that I keep, my journal every day that I write in my journal every day. And uh, so here we go. Um, so, so for the last 10 months, these are my NSVs and I'll just list them off. I, um, I probably won't put any graphics with it. I may or may not. But anyway, um, walking my dog. So I can walk my dog now outside with my cane and not my scooter big thing for me is incontinence believe it or not for those who are really close to me know about this problem that i had back when i was 450 pounds i was incontinent i could not be further than 10 feet away from a bathroom and basically there was just so much fat pressure on my bladder there was so much pressure on my bladder when i'm sitting with i'm standing whatever it pressed down and i constantly had to go to the bathroom so that's gone and no more leaking. I could hold it. I can hold it now, which is, um, I know it's a little bit too much uh, TMI, but that's huge for me because it was debilitating that I couldn't go to concerts because I was afraid that I was going to have an accident. Um, I don't have any more pain in my legs uh, after surgery when I'm sleeping, which is really great. Um, so there's less pressure on my back by losing the weight. And I suppose that that, uh, put a lot of, gave, gave me a lot of my pain in my, um, in my legs. Um, this isn't in order actually, it should be in order, but, um, but I'll just go through the list as I, as it came to my head. And sorry about my dog. So, uh, my best friend Dennis has a big F-150 truck. And the fact I was able to get up into his truck, climb up into his truck, and um and get into the truck is amazing i i've never been able to do that before and now i can get into his truck uh, quite easily i can pull myself up into the truck so that's cool um i sleep better i sleep way better now and um i used to have to slip sleep sitting up believe it or not because there was so much fat here on my neck that if i laid flat i felt like i was choking and now i lay flat i just lay sleep with one pillow and i lay pretty well flat I can wear a bra again. Yes, when I was 450 pounds, there were no, there was no bra big enough for me, and so um, you can probably see it in some uh, photos of mine on Facebook from a year or more before. And I wasn't wearing a bra. I was the girls were just flopping in the wind, and uh, now I wear a bra. And I actually this week bought. A new bra from Lane Bar Bryant. That's where I get my bras in New York. And uh, so a new one is coming because I only own one bra. And I think you should have at least two. And um, so that's the bra thing again. So I can wear my bras again, which is great. Um, not getting out of breath when I'm walking. 
I've, I forgot about that. I mean, walking from here to my bathroom, I used to be completely out of breath and just walking down the hallway to take out my garbage. <laughs> I was like completely out of breath. So not getting out of breath when I'm walking, not getting out of breath by just taking out the garbage and doing stuff is amazing. Um, fitting into chairs, patio chairs, theater seats. Last night, yesterday I went to the theater. Uh, here's a picture. I went to see um, this new musical by Sting. And uh, it was fantastic. Um, the, uh, about uh, the ship industry in his hometown in England. And, um, and it, yeah, it was just a fantastic musical, but it was really cool that I was able to fit in a theater seat. So I bought a regular ticket. I didn't buy a disabled ticket because I used to buy disabled tickets. It's called The Last Ship. Sorry, I couldn't figure out what it was called. Remember what it was called. It's called The Last Ship. And uh, so I fit in the theater seat, which is great. And I'm fitting other chairs as well. So that's a great, a huge NSV. So I don't have to buy disabled seats anymore um, and come in my scooter. I just came in my car, walked from my car to the Princess of Wales Theater with my canes and walked to my seat, which was fantastic. Let's see, another NSV. I can put my feet together. I can't stand very long with my feet together, but I can put my feet together. Uh, another NSV was I recently claimed, climbed up a kitchen ladder. I have one of those two tier kitchen ladders and I had to get something off a very high shelf in my kitchen and I was able to climb up on the ladder, which was cool. Um, buying smaller clothes. Well, that's huge. Buying clothes off the rack. Uh, I recently bought a pair of pants that are size 2X instead of 3X at Joe Fresh because the pants I have are falling off and uh, they're on sale so why not 10 bucks for a pair of pants that's okay that, that's within my means for sure um, okay a little bit of a, a TMI close your eyes close your ears if you don't want to hear about it but I'm actually able to hygienically f reach myself in the front and reach myself in the back when I go to the bathroom to wipe myself with toilet paper couldn't reach myself before so um, that's a big one. That's a huge one that I can, I can reach myself. Um, no more acid reflex. I used to pop Tums like crazy uh, before the surgery. I, I, I would have two, three, four of them a night after I would eat because I had so much acid reflex. I don't have any acid reflex anymore at all. I did have a bit of acid reflex after my surgery and they gave me pills for that, but that's normal. But I went off the pills within two months, I think. I think it was called pro, pro propranol or something like that. I can't remember. Anyways, um, I'll post it. I'll post the, the name under this video. Uh, so you'll know what acid reflex medication you can get after your surgery. Uh, my seatbelts in the car fit without an extension. That's a great NSV for sure. I was able to fly. Remember, I went to California last November, so I'm able to fit into an airplane seat. Um, I'm able to do my own wash, so that's what that's I've been doing. Um, another NSV is no more back pain. I don't have any more back pain. So I used to be able to only stand up for like two or three minutes in the kitchen to heat up food in the microwave, and then my back would be excruciatingly in pain. So I don't have that anymore, so I don't have to take as much Tylenol. I used to take a lot of Tylenol for my back, but a lot of Tylenol for my hip. My hip is hurting less, but when I walk a lot, it hurts a lot. But that's basically because, as we, as I mentioned before in another video, I have um, no cartilage left in my left hip. So I'm, I'm getting hip replacement surgery in August, a full hip, full hip replacement. Uh, no more constipation. So yeah, that's a, that's a huge NSV. That's post op NSV because, uh, I'd say the first six months after, after surgery, I had really, really horrible constipation. And, um, now it's not so much anymore. Um, I'm trying to eat more fiber, put more fiber in my diet. I'm eating more apples and I know apples are very hard, high in carbs but um, I need the fiber in order to make sure that I'm regular. And I have Activia yogurt, and I also take um, 
probiotic pills every day. So that keeps me regular. Um, a great NSV for me was following this mindfulness eating course. That really helps right up till today. It still helps. Speaking of, I need to take a sip of my coffee. Mm. When I watch my videos, I notice I slurp. Let's see if I can take a sip without slurping. Mm. Less enjoyable. <laughs> uh, okay, back to the NSVs. So I did my mindfulness eating course. Uh, this is a huge NSV here. Like I said, it's not in any order. I no longer have to go sideways through the frame of my bathroom door. I can just walk through the door without having to turn sideways. Okay, so I, got, I wanted to just show you how I get through my bathroom door now, okay? Because this is the way I used to have to get through my bathroom door. So I, I only was able to get through my bathroom door going sideways, right? Like this. But now I just go through like this. You see? No problem. So that indeed is a huge NSV. That's huge. So I'm so much smaller, any door frame, I can just walk through the door frame and not have to go sideways through the door frame. Um, I can stand longer. I, it's another NSV. I can get up from the couch without help. Um, many couches are low and I used to have to always have somebody help me pull me out of the couch. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you, so you can visualize it, is getting in and out of my couch. So, uh, as I mentioned, I needed to have somebody pull me out of a couch. And um, I used to actually have to sit on my couch with incontinence pads, believe it or not, because uh, I used to leak. So, here is me getting in and out of the couch now. All right, so sitting down here on my couch. All right, no problem, getting down, now getting back up. So here we go. That's it. You see, another great NSV. Um, I fit into a normal wheelchair. So when I was, uh, when I had wheelchair service at the airport, um, back in November, I was fitting in a normal wheelchair, which was great. Uh, here's another TMI. I can reach my toes in order to cut my toenails. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people take it for granted that they can cut their own toenails. I couldn't cut my toenails. I couldn't reach my toes. There was no way I could reach my toes, but now I can cut. Yes, a friend did my toenails for me. Um, so, uh, now I can cut them myself, which is great. Um, I talked about buying new clothes, so I went from a 7X to a 2X, which is great. Um, and the last NSV, which is really important, which is happening this just this last week, is that I'm playing my horn again and I'm getting gigs again. So I was playing the opera Don Giovanni and uh, really having a great time with seeing my colleagues again. Tonight I have a concert with this choir that I joined, Acquired Taste. And uh, tonight's a concert, though it's going to be pretty bad weather here in Toronto. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I can get there because it's supposed to be like gale force winds tonight, up to 120 kilometers an hour winds. So that's about it for this week. So two pounds down, which I'm great, grateful for, for sure. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for all my sisters and my family and all my friends who have been supporting me this whole journey. And um, only 47 pounds to go to Wonderland, which is very exciting. And uh, this week I have more rehearsals and um, playing my horn more often. And um, we have a, our next bariatric, sur bariatric uh, meeting is, is in two weeks. And um, so, yeah, I think that's about it for this week. Just looking through my journal here and see if I have anything else coming up that's exciting. 
Um, next week, Saturday, my niece is moving into her new apartment, so I'm helping her out with that. And then we have our opera concert on Friday night and uh, Sunday afternoon. So it's going to be great and fun and exciting. And uh, life is exciting. I'm doing way more stuff than I ever have for the last five, six years. And that's really exciting. And I'm just feeling in general happier. And um, I'm happy to help anybody that, that this, if, if you need any advice, if you, you want to leave your comments below and uh, just let me know. We can reach out, we can chat, we can text, whatever. So thanks so much for watching me here at Finding Wendy. And we will see you again next week and hopefully another two or three pounds down next week. And um, you are all so supportive for me and this has been very supportive for me and um you are the reason for the accountability of doing this you know by posting these videos every week it's my way of being accountable to myself to make sure that i stay on track accountability is key and um if you if you use uh, i use this app it's called my net diary and i write down in it every day every meal so I'm constantly watching my calories, my carbs, and my protein. And by keeping track of all of those things, that keeps me on track as well. So accountability is the big word for the day. So have yourself a wonderful day, and we will see you again next week. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Bye! Bye.